ANCC, hey, welcome today. Thank you for being with us. We're excited that we can celebrate on this beautiful Sunday morning. Guys, any Sunday morning that we're in God's presence is beautiful. Any day we're in God's presence is a beautiful day. So I hope you're excited. I want you to smile, okay? We haven't been doing this lately, but I want you to do this. Right now, I'm going to smile. I want you to smile back at me, all right? Ready? Let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. All right, I like those smiles. I still see some of you guys, even through the computers, not smiling back. But it's all right, okay? It's all right. So in a few minutes, we're going to have a time of worship. We're going to have a time of giving and a time of the word. Because I want to encourage you, this message has been stirring in my spirit for this past week. It's been stirring with these different things as I've been um, just processing what is going on in our nation, our world. So I hope you're ready. And I want to, before we start even worship, I ask God to prepare your heart, would you? Would you right now with me, would you just ask God to prepare your heart? Let's ask him together. Father, prepare our hearts. Let our hearts be right. Let our ears be attentive to hear what you want us to hear. Lord, let our hearts be soft to receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name. So guys, I'm excited to worship with you. Would you stay with me as we begin to worship?
fighting force Heaven's angels all around My light is found in no way That you wear the victor's crown You're my help and my defender You're my savior and my friend By your grace I live and breathe to worship you At the mention of your greatness In your name I will bow down in your presence fear is silent, for you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple, let your power overflow. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you.
Hey, NCC. Hey, thanks for worshiping with us today. Man, it's so great that we can come together here online each and every week and just celebrate what God has done. I'm excited, though. In a few weeks, we'll probably be back together here in the building with some different avenues of how we're going to do it. So guys, I want you to keep up with us. If you don't, we don't have your email, please email us at worship at We'd love to have, get you, keep you up to date about what is going to be taking place, what places of safety precautions we're going to put in place also, and what's going to look like here at the church. But guys, I'm excited. You'll hear more about that in the near future. Also, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. And I want to remind you there's multiple ways to give. Here's the cool thing. You can give four different ways. You can either give in an envelope that you can mail into the church at the address listed below. You can put send cash, or you can send check, or mail order, whatever you want to do. You can go on Venmo, which is a cash app, and send it from ncc-church, directly from the cash app. Or you can give online on our website through the generosity tab. Or you can do through your bank, which is through Zelle, and the email is at worship at nassauchristian.org. Guys, I'm excited, and I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in the kingdom of God. Guys, it's awesome that we're not only a church here, but we're making a church of impact in our community and around the world, and it's because of you. But today, I just want to share a message that's been on my heart for the past week, a message that's been stirring, a, a thing I've been feeling deeply, that I've been processing a little bit myself. I've been trying to process what I felt from what I saw on May 25th. On May 25th, when I watched a video of a man named George Floyd being killed, when I watched him crying for his mom, when I watched those things, what emotions that came up. Guys, can, someone asked me this in our meeting we had on Wednesday. What, what were you feeling? Here's what I felt. I felt sick. The first thing I felt was sick. Sick to my stomach that I, what I was watching. Sick to my stomach. And my stomach got sick and my heart became sick. Sick that we're still dealing with these deeper issues of injustice of racism, of hate. That we're still dealing with these things, even in the day of age. In our nation, we're still dealing with them. We've been angry, guys, haven't we? We've been discouraged. We've been hurt. My daughter Evangeline, as we have been talking about this in our home a little bit, she, she said this thing, which really stuck with me. She, she, we were talking about, we were watching some videos, and we're talk, Renee and I were talking, and she said these words. She goes, we haven't got over this yet? I thought, we were, I thought we were done with this. Because in her history book, she's learning of all the things that took place. And we had to sit there with my nine-year-old daughter and tell her, no, it's still going on. It's still taking place. It's still affecting so many lives. Guys, this issue has been an issue in the history of our nation for centuries. It's been an issue for, for centuries in our nation. And after so many years, we're still dealing with this. We still fail to love our brothers and sisters that look different than us. Regardless if you're white, regardless if you're black, regardless if you're brown or, or yellow or whatever you are, regardless of that, we still all deal with this. We still all deal with this issue. And today we're going to talk about a little bit. We're going to talk about this idea, how we can love our brothers and sisters. Guys, we've demeaned and not understood other people. We've dismissed people because of the color skin. And we have to realize this, we are all made in the image of God. Guys, injustice comes from evil. I want you to hear this very clearly. Injustice comes from evil. And as your pastor, it doesn't matter. I want you to hear this for me. It doesn't matter whether you're black, you're white, you're brown, you're yellow, Whatever you are, we are sickened by what we see, and we hurt with you here at this church. We are sickened by what we see, and we hurt with you at this church. And the question I think we need to ask ourselves today is, what does the house of God look like in situations like this? Oftentimes we can look to the media, and we can look to the world for answers, but guys, it's time we as believers... Look at to what the house of God should look like during these times. And so we're going to continue our series on Welcome Home. And today we're going to call it Safe House. What does a safe house look like when we deal with injustice, when we deal with racism, when we deal with hatred? 
How should we, as Christ followers, respond? And how should NCC, as a church, respond? So this past Wednesday, we as a church hosted a Zoom panel and we heard experiences of, and feelings of people who've experienced injustice. And guys, it's so important. I don't care what side you are on with all these things. What I want you to hear is this. It's important that we sit and listen. Regardless, sit and listen. A great learner is someone who listens. As we saw it and listened, and I listened to these things, and I, my stomach got into knots at times. There was times where experiences were shared. My stomach turned inside of me. And someone shared this quote that I thought was such a great quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. He shared it in the comments section as, we were, as people were speaking. And this is this. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 1 John 4, 19 through 21, a verse that was spoken on Wednesday, a verse that I've been speaking with people in conversations I've had this past week. Here's what it says, 1 John 4, 19 through 21. We love because he first loved us. God, Jesus first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God. Keep that up for a second. I want you to see this. I want you to read this, okay? Look what it says. For whoever does not love their brothers and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And when he says brother and sister, he's not talking about people who look just like you. He's talking about everyone who's a brother and sister. G.K. Chesterton said these words. He said, the problem with the world is me. The problem with the world is me. Throughout Scripture, there are questions that are asked. God asks us questions that I think we need to ponder. We may not have all the answers, and I'm not saying we do, but we're, I'm saying this, is that we need to ponder. He asked a question early on, did God really, has God said that? The question we heard, has God said that in Scripture? Where are you? Am I my brother's keeper? We hear these early on in the book of Genesis. We hear these questions. Jesus said this, and these are the words of Christ, when it is done for the least of these, you've done it unto me. When you do it for the least, you do it for me. Matthew 25, and when you have not done it for the least, you have not done it unto me. We are called as believers to love. We as Christ followers are called to love. To love. You're saying, Pastor, I, I just feel this in my spirit right now. I think people are saying, Pastor, oh man, you don't know. You don't know. You're right. I don't know what you feel, but I know what I feel. And I know what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says this, love. The Word of God says to love our brothers and sisters. And so how can we do this? How can we be a house how can we be a caring house, a house that cares? How can we be that? How can we be a caring house? And we see this in, in the scripture. Here we go, ready? Romans 12, 9 through 21. So I want you to turn with me. I want to give you some time. because I know it's a longer passage of scripture, but I want you to see this as we go there. About love. How do we be a caring house? So I'm going to give you a few minutes here. All right, I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. So Romans chapter, um, chapter 12, verse 9 through 21 says these words. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. 
honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And look at verse 14. Look what it says. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. United, that's what it is. It's unity. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay any evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil with evil. Do not, come over, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Albert Einstein, a man who lived in Princeton, a man who lived right up the street from our church, he made this statement when it was a time when they were making an atom bomb. He said, what a sad era it is when it is easier to smash an atom than, a, than prejudice. Let that sink in for a second. What a sad era it is when it is easier to smash an atom than it is prejudice. Nice Lucado, an author that I really love and I really enjoy, he wrote a blog post that I want to share with you. It's a little longer, but I want you to, I want you to hear these words these are Max Lucado's words. And he, he shared about his feelings on race, racism and injustice. And here's what he said. He said, recently racially charged incidents, including the tragic death of George Floyd, have torn the rawest wound, opened the rawest wounds, racism. Judging a person according to skin color is an ancient sin. For that reason, God gave this ancient solution. In some of the earliest of words of the scripture, God spoke, Genesis 1.26, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflect in our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. Embedded in these words is the most powerful, wonderful pr promises of God. God made us reflect his image. No one is a God, but everyone carries the same communicable attributes of God. Wisdom, love, grace, kindness. We all have a longing for something eternal and lasting. We are made in his image. But guys, sin has distorted and twisted this image. But it has not destroyed it, Max Lucado says. Our moral purity has been tainted. Our intellect is polluted by foolish ideas. The image of God is sometimes difficult to discern, but do not think that God has rescinded his promise or altered his plan. He still creates people in his image. I want you to hear that again, what he said. He still creates people in his image to bear his likeness and reflect his glory. This has nothing to do with looking inside yourself and finding your value. It has nothing to do with judging yourself based on the standards set up by the media. How can we respect our neighbors? What is God's solution to racism? Government programs might help. Lectures might enlighten. But in the end, God's plan is the only plan. See, every person on the planet has God's idea. Would you let this truth define the way you see other people? Every person you see was created by God to bear 
His image and deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. This means that all people deserve to be seen by who, for who they are, image bearers of God. Imagine the impact this promise would have upon the society that embraced it. What civility it would engender. What kindness it would foster. Racism will not flourish when people believe their neighbors bear God's image. Max Lucado. Racism, injustice will not flourish when we realize that people bear God's image. We are created, all of us, all of us are created in the image of God. So right now I'm in a room with Sam. I'm in a room with Sam. Sam has a different skin color than me. But guys, we're the same image. We're the same image of God. And guys, in that we have to realize that we are his. We must make a house where Jesus dwells. We must make a Jesus house. We must create that in our, in our churches. 1 John 1, 5 through 11. This is how we are to know him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you've had since the beginning. This old command is a message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. It's, I, I am writing you a new command. It's truth in seeing in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. But look at verse 9. Anyone, and look at that word. Look at that. I want to see. I want to see that word. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Think about this. Look at this. If you hate someone, you're walking around in darkness, not knowing what direction you are going. But anyone who loves, who loves their brother and sister, is walking in the light. And that means you see the path set before you. You see the direction you go. Even this week, I had people reach out to me and say I shouldn't talk about this. Even this week, I had people say, you shouldn't talk about this. That's what the church is supposed to do. We're not supposed to talk about these things. You shouldn't be dealing with these things. You shouldn't deal with injustice. You shouldn't deal with racism. Guys, we've had people leave our church, white people who leave our church, because we have too many people who don't look like them. But here's the thing. We've had black people, we've had Asian people, we've had Indian people leave our church because there's not enough people who look like them. So guys, both of these things are wrong. All of these things are wrong when it comes to the kingdom of God. If we can get beyond this in our church, how deep is our relationship with God going to be if we see people for who they are as image bearers of God? As people who bear the image, who bear his likeness. And I look at my brother and sister and I can say, man, they look like God. Man, they, they look like God. And they can look at me and they say, man, they look like God. They bear the image of the creator of the universe. What more can God do us in us as a church? Here's the thing it really boils down to. A lot of it does. It's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. It's an issue right here. So I want you to do this. Would you put your hand over your heart? Right now I can feel my heart beating. Guys, the issue starts here. The issues that we have start here. They start in us. They start in us. Because guys, if we, our hearts are corrupt, if our hearts are evil, then what comes out is evil, guys, too. We allow those things that are built up. There's all the times we have things in our heart that we don't say out loud, but there are times where we say them out loud, or we do them out loud without even thinking. Guys, trait in me, Scripture says this, Psalm 51.10, it says this, Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a new heart 
And may as we all say, with your hand of your heart, Lord, create in me a new heart. Would you say that with me? Create in me a new heart. A heart that beats for you. A heart that sees people that is the image of God. A heart that loves. A heart that doesn't walk in darkness, but walks in the light. I think this too. It's also a home issue. It's a heart issue, but it's also a home issue. Proverbs 22, 6 says this. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Studies show, and studies I've been reading this past couple weeks have been showing this, have been showing that by the age of four and a half years old, children have a bent towards racism. Both sides, all different colors, have a bent towards racism or bias. And guys, here's the thing. Inherently, that's not what people have. Kids don't have that inherently. That is something that is taught. That is something that's taught in the home. Either consciously or unconsciously, we teach those things. Reactions, looking at someone different, saying something. And what happens is kids pick up those and they have these biases and these bents towards these things at the age of four and a half years old. Why? Why is that? Why is it coming to that place? In our homes, guys, let's be an example. I said this on Wednesday night. I said, guys, it doesn't matter what we do on church. What do we live outside of it? Because sometimes we go in church, you're watching, and you're like, oh, yeah, Pastor, that's great. Oh, man, uh, let's do that. But then we live something different in our homes, and we live something different on, in our community. Let's live as Christ followers, as image bearers all the time. Let's live for him and watch what he will do. Guys, it's, an issue, it's a church issue, too. It's a church issue. Do you realize the most segregated time in America is on Sundays, they always say? And I believe it's true. Our church is a great example of not that. We are a church of multicultural. We have church from many, many nations. You guys can't see the flags behind me or in front of me, but there's flags from all the nations in our church. But guys, the church has to change. It's an issue within our churches. Lord, build our house in a way that honors you. Let that be our cry for NC. Lord, let, let, Lord, build our house in a way that honors you. Unless the Lord builds the house, Psalms 127.1 says, those who build it labor in vain. It's an issue in our nation. For the history, for hist history for a long time in our nation, this has been an issue. So Proverbs 14, 34 says this. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We as a people must get on our knees. Let's get on our knees and pray. It says, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And hear, then I turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Let us get on our knees more. Let us do less talking to each other and more talking to him. Let us, let us turn off the TV. I want to encourage you, turn off media. Media feeds something inside of us, right? It feeds, feeds something in our hearts one real bad. But guys, what if we turn it off and just focus on him and say, God, what are you saying? God, what are you showing me? What are you speaking to me at this time, Lord? What are you bringing me to? And ask him those questions. Ask him to move. Ask him to work. And he will. But I think there's some steps that we need to take to move forward in all of our lives. And I'm talking not just to white people. I'm not talking just to black people. I'm talking to brown people. I'm talking to yellow people. I'm talking to all of us as a body of Christ right now. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Take a deeper step towards Jesus. Look at yourself and then walk towards Jesus. I want to encourage you, listen to a friend not like you. Listen to someone who's not like you. Don't always sit with the person who agrees with you, but sit with someone and have a conversation with someone to listen to their hearts. Be the church 
that Jesus is pleased to be in. And here's the thing we've been learning through this whole COVID-19 is this. The church is not a building. The church is us. We are the church. So be the church that God's presence wants to dwell in, that he's pleased to be in. Be that church. Look at the next one with me. Look at the next one. Honor God by honoring others better than yourself. I think the next one is a great one. Learn to be honest. Learn to be honest. Take steps towards reconciliation in the house of God. So if you have a problem with a brother or sister because of the color of skin in our church, you need to take steps. You need to take steps. And guys, it's across all things. So oftentimes we, 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 we stay with people we're familiar with, right? We stay with people that are like us. But guys, I believe that we need to, we need to reach out more. When's the last time you went to lunch with someone after church that didn't look like you? I'm not saying just one person in your group, but your group was a mixed group of all different people, of all people who bear the image of Christ. When was that? Or are you always going to lunch with people who look like you? Or spend time with people who look like you? For all of us, guys, we have to look at everyone to go out and say, we want to be that church. If I have a problem with a brother who looks different than me, I'm going to talk to him so we can be the church, a safe house for people to come to. House of love. I had people tell me this week, they said, Pastor, the reason we come to NCC, one of the reasons we come to NCC is because it's a house that accepts people. That's what it's about, guys. And we're going to be that house always. We're always going to be that house that accepts people, that loves people, regardless of background, regardless of color, regardless of where they came from. We're going to love you. And that's our, that's our heart, and that's the heart of God, too. Take action to change laws and lives. Take steps. Take a step to change laws and change lives. And here's a big one, guys. Our soul does not have a color. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell me what my color of my soul is. Our soul does not have a color. We are created in the image of God. Okay, guys, for real change to happen, especially in our nation and the world, we need each of us to make the change. We need each other. We can't just do ourselves. We need each other to make the change. Guys, the government can make all the laws at once. It can make all the requirements. It can make all the things that it wants. But that doesn't change the real issue, hearts. The Lord does that. The Lord does those things. I want you to hear me very clearly. When I talk about the Lord, when I talk about who I'm talking about is Jesus. I'm talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And I want you to hear this. He is not a Republican. He is not a Democrat. He is not an Independent. He doesn't lean right. He doesn't lean left. That's not who he is. He leans into you. That's who the Lord we're talking about. He doesn't lean right. He doesn't lift. He leans into you. He leans towards you. He's saying, I love you because you were created in my image. Everyone was created in his image. We must step up. Guys, it's not about a party. It's not about a church denomination. It's about the people of God redeemed, set free from bondage. That must be the change. That must step up and speak when things are unjust, who must step up and share when things aren't right. And we must start with us. It must start with us as individuals and as our church. We must start. Revelation 7, 9 through 11. I love how what, what heaven's going to look like. This is when we're finally home. When we're finally home, look at Revelation 7, 9 through 11. says these words. After this, I looked. And I want you to read this with me. After this, I looked. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. <laughs> From every nation, every tribe, every people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes, and they were holding branches in their hand. 
And they were crying out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits onto the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne, worshiping God. Do you see this image? It's everyone. All people. Every people, every group, every color will be for the throne of God, kneeling, waving palm branches, saying, worthy, Lord, you are. You are a great king. That's, that's what we are as a church. This is what's going to be in heaven. So if you don't like diversity, you're going to have a tough time in heaven. just want to help be honest with you. If you don't like diversity, if you want everyone to look like you, you're going to have a very tough time in heaven. So remember that. Let's be the people who will need to be it. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says this, if one part of our body suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part is honored. Guys, God is able. God is able, but he's looking for people who are united. As a church, let us be the example of that. Let us be a people who are united in him who are united with each other, who stand arm to arm, and people see image bearers of Christ. People see a church and a people of God, Christ followers, who love each other that, with a love that doesn't make sense to the world, but love and care for one another. Let us be that as we walk. Let us be that. Let us be those image bearers. Because God knows, and God is able. So remember, let us listen to each other. Let's walk in each other. Let's remember whose image we are created in. And guys, hate has no place here. Hate has no place here at NCC. I want you, I want you to hear this again from my lips. Hate has no place here at NCC. Division has no place here. If you're going to cause division based on race or anything else, guys, Find somewhere else. Because we want to be a church who's united after one goal. After one heart. And I loved it, guys. On Wednesday, I, it was a Zoom call. We had sent it to everyone. But I mean, it was a Zoom call. And I, I, was, I was scrolling through the images. I could see people's faces. And in that room was a number of people, all different backgrounds. All different skin tones. All different ages. But we were there for one purpose. United by a common goal and that was Jesus Christ. And so guys, let's keep focus on that. Let's keep looking to him. Let's keep calling out to him. And remember, when one part of the body hurts, we all hurt. And so I want to encourage you, let's hurt with our brothers and sisters at these moments. Let's hurt. And let us look to Jesus, the ender of all injustice, the ender of all things, as we look to him, as we create what he wants us to be in us, in our hearts. So do this. Would you pray with me? Would you put your hand over your heart right now? Why don't you put your hand over your heart? Or maybe if you're near your spouse or a family member, would you grab their hand too? And let's pray. I'm going to pray over injustice, over racism, over hatred. I want to pray right now. Let me pray together. Lord, our prayer at this moment in history, at this very moment, Lord, let it be a moment that lasts a lasting moment of quality, of transformation, and of change. Let it start here first, Lord. Our prayer, Lord, it, Lord, change our hearts. Change our hearts with our hands of our hearts, Lord. I ask you to just begin to change our hearts at this moment. Lord, let us as a people, as a nation, return to God. That each of us who are followers of Jesus would be change agents that we would be the agents of change in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in our world. Lord, let us be changing. Let us start here. Let us show the love, Lord. Let's be Christ followers who love people. And let us show the love of Christ to everyone around us. Lord, we pray right now. We humble ourselves. And we ask. Lord, heal our nation. Heal our nation. Lord, heal those wounds of injustice. Heal those wounds of hate. Heal those wounds of hatred. Heal those wounds, Lord, that have gone so deep. Heal us 
Lord, let us start here. Let us be transformed by God's power, by the power of the Holy Spirit living in our lives. Let it be lived out for all to see a lasting change, a transformation of our heart and our nation and our cities, Lord. Let it start here. And Father God, even with our hearts still beating, Lord, you have a plan for us. Or even as I feel my heart beat at this moment, Lord, I know you have a plan and a purpose for all of us. And let us walk in those plans and purpose. Let us walk in that anointing, united, Father God, together, loving. And Lord, I pray for the coming weeks as we're going to be back together in our building, Lord, in a few weeks, I'm sure. Lord, I pray right now for us to be a living example for Princeton. To our, for our church, as we walk in these walls, as we walk outside these walls, to be a living example. As we go out to lunch, Lord, it'll be how we live in our daily life and our families. Lord, let's be a living example of what it means to be a Christ follower who loves, who loves, and who cares, and continually points people back to Jesus. Because we know the only hope, we don't only the only hope for for anything, Lord, for injustice, for hate, is you. The only thing that can heal is Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you and we praise your holy name in the matchless, the mighty, the name that unites us all. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, let that be your prayer. Trust him with it and watch what he will do. Guys, I want to encourage you, would you stand with me as we worship some more? And remember, guys, hey, you keep an eye out for what we're going to be doing with the opening of the church. But guys, let us be people who love and love your neighbors as you love yourself. I'll see you guys next week.
He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God. 